guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I am actually want to talk about the Scottish National Party. They have actually reintroduced the... basically allowing them to start doing tail docking on dogs. And if you don't know what tail docking is, basically tail docking involves severing through bone, nerve, muscle and connective tissue when pups are less than five days old. Let's see, animal welfare charities have actually expressed ex extreme disappointment with this after the SNP government actually voted to reintroduce the, what, what is an, an outdated and unnecessary tail shortening procedure for puppies in Scotland. On Wednesday actually the SNP and Conservative SNPs voted in favour of an amendment that will obviously see tail docking which was outlawed in Scotland in 2007. So what actually, it's actually introduced for some breeds of puppy as vets actually believe they'll actually become working dogs which is absolutely terrible to use dogs as basically as a servant, you know all this only too well. Let's see, the practice actually involves removing part of the puppy's tail without anaesthetic. It's actually been described as acutely painful and it really really is. And that is, this is also all endorsed by the Scottish Animal the One Kind charity who actually was a volunteer with, they're actually trying to get a, a lobby to ban this as well. And that they've actually said it's basically a step backwards for animal welfare in the north of the border as well, where, where we stay in Scotland. But I say Wednesday's vote will actually see Spaniel and Hunt Point Retriever puppies who are actually no more than five days old have a maximum of a third of their tails removed by vets. If there's actually sufficient evidence that the dog will actually be used for the, such as working purposes, such as gun dogs and hunting foxes and such likes as that, such as things like spaniels and bloodhounds and such likes, actually those in favour of introducing the procedures say it'll actually prevent working dogs from serious injury in later life and have to have their tails amputated as adults. But I say no animal welfare or vet organisations support its reintroduction. Let's well, see, Lana Hannigan from the Dogs Trust actually said that tail docking involves severing through bone, nerve, muscle and connective tissues when pups are less than five days old, at which it's no point to actually difficult to guarantee they're actually going to be working dogs. Let's well, see, the Dogs Trust is actually sadly, deeply saddened by it as well because the Scottish Government is reintroducing this out outdated and unnecessary practice. But I see sadly today we've seen a significant step backwards for animal welfare for a country who once always led the way, and we have led the way, let's say Scotland's led the way so, so much. We've done things like banning the mountain hair cullens and such likes. Harry Houghton from the actual One Kind Charity actually said this is a sad day for animal welfare. Scotland has gone from a world leading ban and tail docking to a law that obviously allows puppies weaker protection than in England. This was obviously done in the absence of evidence with no support from the animal welfare and veterinary communities and against the wishes of a vast majority of the Scottish public who had actually wanted to see the ban as it was. Let's see, Scottish Labour's animal welfare spokesman actually said, David, David Stewart his name has said that the horrific process is no place in a civilised society and was banned by the last Labour government. This is basically a major disappointment and step backwards from the Scottish Labour who will always actually fight to protect dogs from this brutal treatment. But I see one MSP actually who supported the amendment, Emma Harper said, defend herself on Twitter as always. She said from people who had criticised her from supporting the reintroduction of tail docking and puppies saying it was an evidence based decision. But I see there is... <sighs> She actually said this is a preventative measure and to shorten tails in a very small number of working hunting dogs in order to avoid very damaging injuries and amputations in adult life. She actually tweeted that I will continue to push for alternatives. So, but I know it's, it's really, really crazy guys and I want to take these back because I actually had a spaniel and her tail was docked by a breeder way back in 2005. Obviously I wasn't vegan at this time, but my dog suffered so, so many issues with her stability and her balance and eventually her back end gave away. Right for a puppy, you can see she was totally unbalanced, she was swaying from side to side. It really does do an awful lot of damage to their spinal cord. Let's see, historically, tail docking was actually thought to prevent things like rabies, strength in the back, increase the animal speed and prevent injuries from obviously ratting, fighting and obviously baiting. Let's see, this is obviously of course 19th century trash as we all know and it's really, really important that people understand that. 
So like I say, talking about tail docking, like I say, tail docking has obviously become a practice for certain breeds of dogs, but the do if the dog is under a rate of appendage, like I say, in fact, the, the tail is obviously treated with such contempt by humans that a large number of the tails are, are locked off when a puppy is just teed days old like I talked about there. The procedure of tail docking is really really painful, it's carried out without anaesthesia like I talked about earlier on. Could you imagine getting your leg amputated without anaesthesia? That's going to way back in the days where they basically gave you alcohol and lopped off your leg, you know what I mean? Even that, the, the animals have got nothing to actually endure the pain that they're going through. The pupper is actually forcibly strained, where the tail is actually stretched backwards. A pair of scissors is then used to cut through the tail. And you can imagine that the puppy squeals loudly and wiggles, let's say, but, we're at, but we are told that they don't really feel it. How do we know that? I'm quite sure they do feel it. Let's say, they certainly seem to be feeling the pain, although because, because they've actually diminutive size, they cannot escape. Let's say just because they're quiet after again after five minutes does not mean that they're feeling the pain at the same time. If you used a pair of scissors to actually cut off a newborn's baby little finger, they would obviously cry for a while. Then they would obviously stop and return to obviously sucking from their mother. I say, does this mean that they would not feel the the finger being cut off and amputated? Of course it would not. I say, if the the a member of the public actually carries out this procedure, he or she is obviously guilty and cruelty to animals. Yet tail docking is sometimes carried out. I mean, it's it's like you know what I mean. It's really really hypochondria, uh, uh, hyperfit. You, yeah, you know what I mean. Hypo, critical, hypercritical. If you know what I mean. I basically cannot understand why Jack Russell Terriers. Boxers, Doberman Pinchers, and many other breeds are deemed to have tails, and then, in some way, offensive to the eye. When you see the fine swishing expression tails of the individuals of these breeds, who have actually been unlocked, you you wonder why some people insist on the removal. There are too many arguments to obviously justify the, the tail docking, but not, neither argument is it really actually persuasive. So I'm going to link down below guys a, a, a site that's actually put up a thing for actually to, to go into and actually vote to actually get this banned in the, in the government. So if you can please go like, share and support it on all your social media, it would mean the world. Let's say this is absolutely a big step backwards for where we've came from and, and basically banning all this and showing the animal cruelty. It's really, really disgusting, guys, and like I say, you think about it, like I say, would you do that to your baby or anything else? No, you wouldn't. Why do they not feel it? Of course they feel it. This is basically the, the kind of old conundrum that animals don't feel, they don't think and such like. Yes, they do. Animals are sentient beings. They're just as sentient as me, you, and everybody else. They can think, they can feel. They're, they've got babies, they're no different from us, they're, their skin, their heart, their bone, their brain, everything, there's no different, we're all animals, so I would like you to please go like, share and support it, please vote on it as well, if that would mean the world, I'll link it down below, please let me know in the comments guys, like I say, I would like to do more videos on this, like I say, I'm all about the animals as you all know, like I say, but animals are really close to my heart, and could you imagine locking off somebody like this, this little lovely darling here, I mean, look at it, beautiful in every way, like I say, dog spelt backwards, God, we could learn so, so much from them, like I say, their true meaning to what us humans should actually be like, all the loving, caring for so little in return, a bit of loving and a bit of food, that's all they want, exactly darling, so please let me know in the comments below guys, and I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.